So, good. We can start. Yes, we can start. Yes, we can start. So, page eight. So, page eight. First of all, I hope you know the operation with the complex numbers. So, the first exercise is very simple. It's the formula 2.2. .2. So, we have two complex numbers, one plus i <clears throat> over one minus i plus one minus i over one plus i. So the general, the general method, the idea, if you want, you have two fractions, two fractions, and the only one difference is that that i square is minus one. So it's a very special number, but we are dealing with as as with a usual number. You see, so so the solution to this exercise. I have the sum of two fractions. So I multiply the numerator of the first fraction by one plus i. The second one, the second numerator by one minus i. And we can obtain that in the numerator of our fraction, we have one plus i square plus one minus i square multiplied by <clears throat> one plus i divided by excuse me uh, divided by one plus i multiplied by one minus i i hope that you know that a plus b multiplied by a minus b is a square minus b square. Do you know this formula? Yes, I know. Yes. All the people know this, this formula. Yes, sir. Yeah, very good. So, in the denominator, so the product 1 plus i multiplied by 1 minus i is 2. Is clear. If you yes, have a pen, uh, pencil, it, it is, there is no problem. So we have the numerator. In this numerator, we have if we take the square of 1 plus i, then it will be 1 plus 2i minus 1. Why minus 1? Because i square is minus 1. Okay? Same thing for 1 minus i to the second power. Then we have that in our in our numerator we have in fact we have zero then the the answer the solution of this exercise s is zero is it clear yes 
Maybe yes, it's clear. Maybe you have some questions. No. Good. So, page number nine. <clears throat> A little part of the theory. So, we know, I hope you will know, using, the, using my notes, that in the Argon diagram, we can represent any complex number as a point on the plane. You see? But if you take, if you take page 10, you can see that, in fact, in fact, we can represent the number, the complex number Z in this complex, in this complex plane, in Cartesian coordinate, or, or in polar coordinate. Do you know these polar coordinates? Do you have some uh, information from your lectures on the polar coordinates? Um, the polar coordinates for Z, isn't it X plus I, Y? Uh, you see, uh, the polar coordinates, so it is, the, it is, in our case, it's the modulus and the argument. So, please, first of all, in this case, please, take, <coughs> take page number 10. So, in this case, in this case, we have, if you want, the distance, the distance from the origin to your point. And this distance, let's denote by r, little r, small r, okay? It will be the modulus. I will explain you what this the modulus, but <clears throat> the polar coordinates are defined by the modulus and the argument. The argument. What is important is the angle between this line connecting the origin and your point. You see? And the axis 0x. Can you see the page number 10? Can you see the page my number 10? Yes. yes. Yeah. Very good. So, you see, for any point on our complex plane, we can represent our point by two coordinates. It's R and theta. Theta it's, it is the angle, and R is the distance between the origin and this point. We have, we have a line connecting the origin and the point. And if we can, we can find the length of this line, it will be the modulus of our of our complex number from the Pythagor theorem. So we have two ways to define our complex number. Either by the Cartesian coordinates, either in polar coordinates. 
So if if I write, you see page nine, if I write that my complex number that is x pi plus i multiplied by y, then we can also write that it is r multiplied by cosine of theta plus i multiplied by r sine of theta. Here, here, it's a usual, it's a usual way to define, to define the polar coordinates. Here I write that x is r multiplied by cosine of theta and y is r multiplied by sine of theta. So I hope that you know at least something from the geometry in order to understand how to using page, using the uh, figure on the page 10, you can understand how to find your x and your y. In this way, in this way, you have that the modulus of your complex number is the square root of x square plus y square. And in order to in order to find in order to find this angle theta, you have the formula that tan tangent of theta is y over x. So this number r we will call the modulus of the complex number z. And uh, you see the notation is not Maybe it is not very clear for you because we write something like an absolute value of z. Because I hope you know that uh, if I take a real number, then the absolute value of, uh, for example, minus 5 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. In this case, the absolute value of the modulus of the complex number or a complex number z is denoted like absolute value of z. Uh, in this way, uh, this uh, this angle theta is also called the argument of the complex value z, and um, it is written as ag z. So you have in this definition, page 9, that the modulus of z is the square root of x square plus y square, sinus of theta or ag z is y divided by square root of x square plus y square, and finally, cos of theta or cos of r z is x over x square, square root of x square plus y square. So, this is the definition. You see, this is a definition, nothing else. This comes from the from the geometry. Is it clear? Uh, yes, it's clear. Clear. So I underline that for the moment we have only the definition. Something to remember. Something to remember, because you will have your test. 
online. You will have your tests online. So you have to remember these definitions. You see? Okay. So now we take page number 11. So we see here, here we have a remark. That in fact, that in fact, you know that, uh, for example, sine of x plus 2 pi is sine x. Cosine x plus 2 pi is also cosine x. <clears> or <throat> sine x plus 4 pi is also sine x and so on so on so page number 11 excuse me uh, we have that in fact in fact our argument is defined up to multiples of 2 pi but but In order to simplify our life and our seminar, we will count the argument counterclockwise. And our argument theta will be between 0 and 2 pi. You see, it's the rule for us now ever i want and you want also because i want this that <clears throat> we will count our argument counterclockwise is it clear what does it mean i think so yes of the people, are you agree? Dear colleagues, are you agree? Yes. Yes. When you yes. Clear? Yes. So, you see, you see, if we take the picture on the page number 10, so counterclockwise. I will begin, I will begin from the angle equals zero, and then I will go on the left, on the left, and then I will have my angle between the line zero X and the line, the line, uh, origin my point so uh, in this way you have always some line between the origin and the point and this this line have some angle with the axis 0 x and I will count this angle in the counter in the counter clockwise sense so for example for this page 10 you see we can imagine that this theta is something like pi over 4 it is not right but we can imagine we can imagine that it is pi over four maybe pi over three and so on is it clear the idea yes uh, is it clear this idea and our rule for this work.
Hello. Is it clear? Uh, yes. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah it is clear. Yes. Very good. Hello. Hello. So, page number twelve. Now we are we are going to to deal with uh, the modulus and the argument of complex numbers. So exercise number eight. The exercise we have four four complex numbers. The first one that is minus four. Second one is minus i. And the third one is minus five minus two multiplied by square root of six multiplied by i. So, as for the first case, <clears throat> you see from this definition of the modulus, of the modulus, where is this definition? The definition is on the page nine. Okay? So, if I have complex number x plus i multiplied by y then then uh, i can write that in the first case we have no imaginary part you see we have no imaginary part we have only a real part so in this case the modulus of our complex number is square root of 4 to the power 2, if you want, if you want, but it is the same thing, it will be minus 4 to the power 2, but minus 1 to the power 2 is 1, so I write 4 to the power 2 plus 0, because we do not have the imaginary part in our, in our complex number. So, in this case, the modulus of our complex number Z is 4. Second, for the second case, we have that our complex number is minus I. So, in this case, we have no real part. Then, then, then. Minus i, it's a complex number, something like i multiplied by minus 1. Agree? I yes. Guess. Yes. So, the modulus of this number, of this number, is square root of 0 to the power 2 plus 1 to the power 2, this means 1. Finally, finally, the third case, the third case, when I have that my complex number z is minus 5 minus 2 square root of 6 multiplied by i, then what we have to write square root of of the real part to the power two that is minus five square which is twenty five minus minus the square of the imaginary part that is minus 2 square root of 6 to the second power that is 24. So the modulus in this case is 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Clear. Mm -hmm. I hope it's clear. Now, 
now we will show some some results only in order to underline of to underline our general results so page 13 i want to show if i have if i have two complex numbers that w okay we want to show that the modulus of their product is the product of their modulus you see the formula 3.2 in this case you see in this case what do we have if i denote that as a plus b i and w as c plus d i then then you can find easily that the product of these two complex numbers that w you see uh, you have the product of two numbers and in this case the only one difference i repeat is the fact that i square is minus one so if i want to find the products the product z by w i will find that it will be the complex number ac minus b d plus bc plus a d multiplied by i so by the imaginary unit then then if i want to find the modulus of this complex number i use my general formula so i take the square root of 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 this sum the first term of this sum is square of the real part the second the second sum is the square of my imaginary part <clears throat> then then if you take if you take the square root of this of this sum you will see you can see that it will be it will be square root of a square plus b square multiplied by c square plus d square here is it clear or not it's only an algebra yes professor nothing else so then then square root of this product the square root of this product is the product of two square roots first one square root of a square plus b square and the second square root of c square plus b square so if i have that my first complex number that is a plus b i then square root of a square plus b square will be the modulus of my of my complex number z and the same thing for the complex number w so the formula 3.2 is true is it clear uh yes it's clear very good now now we want to work with the arguments we want to work with the arguments of complex numbers 
So the exercise number 10. So I will forget. You see, I will forget about the phrase up to multiples of 2 pi. So we are working, we are working in the range between 0 and 2 pi. You see? So in this case, you see, in this case, I have two numbers, two numbers, Z and W. And you see, I can rewrite my number R small, or my number Z as R multiplied by cos small theta plus I sinus small theta and W as capital R multiplied by cos capital theta plus I sinus capital theta. It's, uh, it's, do you understand how to do this? If I have something like plus uh, x plus y multiplied by i, then I can have that my complex number will be r multiplied by cos plus i sine. Is it clear? Because I can find always that the modulus of my real number or of my complex number will be x square uh, square root of x square plus y square. So I divide the first term by the square root and the second term, and then I will have cosine and sine. For this, you can see page, you can see page number nine. You can see page number nine. So here you can find how I can represent my complex number in the trigonometrical form. So I have two numbers, two complex numbers defined in terms of their modulus and their argument. So if I take the product, the product of Z and W, <coughs> I have the product of their modulus multiplied by cos theta plus I sin theta multiplied by cos capital theta plus I sinus capital theta. Then I hope it is not very difficult. It is not very difficult to rearrange the terms in this product. And then the product of Z and W will be the product of modulus and multiplied by cos theta plus cos capital theta plus i sinus small theta plus capital theta. This means that first of all, the modulus of the product, it was proved already that the modulus of this product is the product of the modulus. But also, we can see that the argument of this product is small theta plus capital theta. Is it clear? Or you have some questions? I hope and I think, I think that you have to know the trigonometric formulas. It is very useful 
in your status. It will be very useful in your status, uh, especially in the mathematical analysis. So, if you have some questions, please. You have some questions or not? Uh, no, I think everything is good. For, 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 for all the people or only for you, Eric? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why they're not responding. OK, so. Yeah, everything is good, Professor. I just have a lack of internet sometimes. So, so. everything cool. Just a moment, it is very dark. So now we continue with our with our complex numbers and please, please take the page number 15 page number 15 so as in the previous exercises we have two complex numbers z and w and then we claim then we claim that the conjugate complex number to the product that multiplied by w is the product of the conjugate z and w and uh, the same thing if we take a fraction z over w but now now we will consider only the first case as for the second one i think you can try to do this at home so as for the as for the conjugate of the product that w so if i take that that is a plus di and w is c plus di then the product the product will be will be ac minus bd plus bc plus adi so if i take the conjugate of this product i will write the conjugate of AC minus BD plus BC plus ADI. Then by the definition of this conjugation, then I will change the sign, the sign of the imaginary part from plus to minus. In this case, from the usual algebra, you will have that it will be a minus b i multiplied by c minus d i or this means that it will be the product of conjugated z multiplied by conjugated w is it clear Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Yes. So now, a more complicated, a more complicated situation. Uh, I hope, I hope that you know what this, the triangle inequality. No answer. In this case, for the complex numbers, we have 
the inequality 3.5. So in this case, in this case, what do we have? If I have two complex numbers, Z and W, then the modulus of their sum is less or equal to the modulus of the first number plus the modulus of the second one. It's the triangle inequality for the complex number. As for the real number, I hope you know that the absolute value of A plus B is less or equal absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. So, same thing for the complex number. So, how to, how to prove this triangle inequality? First of all, you see, if I take, if I take that, uh, the sum of Z and the conjugated Z, Z plus Z bar, it will be two real parts of the complex number Z. I think it is clear. So, if you take Z like A plus BI and conjugate Z A minus BI, then Z plus Z bar will be 2A, so two real parts of Z. Mm -hmm. Clear. Is clear. Uh, yes, clear. Clear. So the second thing, you see, good. The second thing, we also we also observe that the real part of that is less or equal modulus of Z. I think it is also clear because modulus of Z is the square root of real part to the second power plus imaginary part to the second power. So the real part of Z will be less or equals modulus of Z. Is it clear? Yes. Affirmative. Yes. yes. Affirmative. Alors, so, if I take, if I take now two complex numbers, Z sub 1 and Z sub 2, Z sub, sub 2, excuse me. So I can write, I can write the following, the following inequality. Z1 multiplied by Z2 bar plus Z1 bar multiplied by Z2 divided by 2 is the real part of the product Z1 multiplied by the conjugated of Z2 and consequently it will be less or equal to the modulus of Z1 Z2 bar or, you see, we know that the product or the, the modulus of the product of two complex values is the product of their modulus. So it will be finally 
the product of Z1 multiplied of the modulus of Z1 multiplied by the modulus of Z2. This part, is it clear or not? Because here maybe you have some questions. Uh, for me, it's clear, but I'm not sure about the other students. As in, I'm good. Good? Yeah, me too. For all the people. Me too, it is clear. Clear. Good, good. So now, you see, I want to consider, I want to consider the modulus of the sum the one plus the two to the second power. So in this way, in this way, I can say that the modulus of z1 plus z2 to the second power is the product of z1 plus z2 multiplied by z1 plus z2 bar. So by the conjugated complex number. Then I know also that if I take z1 plus z2 conjugated, it will be the sum of conjugated numbers. I write this. Then I take, I take, I take this product and I can see that it will be less or equals, less or equals. You see the first term. The first term is Z1 multiplied by Z1 conjugated. Then you have Z1 multiplied by Z2 conjugated plus Z1 conjugated Z2. The sum of these two terms is less or equals the product of the modulus. We have seen this before in, in the line above. Can you see this? So, in fact, you have uh, the sum of four terms. The first one and the last one <coughs> are the modulus of Z1 square, and the last one is the modulus of Z2 square. So, we have only two terms. Z1 multiplied by Z2 bar, so Z2 conjugated, <coughs> plus Z1 conjugated multiplied by Z2. But from the previous inequality, we have an estimate, an estimate for this sum. So we have Z. This sum of four terms is less than Z modulus of Z1 square plus 2 multiplied by <coughs> modulus of Z1 multiplied by the modulus of Z2 plus the modulus of Z2 square. So you have a perfect square of two modulus. And this, this inequality gives our desired inequality 3.5. Is it clear? Yes, it is. Good. So, no questions. Mm -hmm. Here, we have no problems, in fact, because we have some auxiliary inequality in the beginning and then we use these inequalities in order to have our desired inequality 3.5. Good? Clear? Yes, it's clear. Yes, sir. Clear. 
Thank you. So now, so now uh, we turn <coughs> the page, we turn the page and we try, we try, we will try to find the arguments of complex numbers. So let's consider exercise number 13, page 17. Okay, so the exercise. In the formula 3.6, we have three different numbers. So z equals i, z equals minus 1, and then z equals 2 minus 2i. Two so in the first case, you see, I know that any complex number I can represent as z equals r multiplied by cos phi plus i sinus phi. In our case, you can find easily that the modulus of our complex number z in this case is 1. Is it clear? Because yes, it's, it's clear. Good. So, in addition, you see, what do we have? We have that z is exactly i. So, in this case, r is 1, cos phi, cos phi is 0. There is no real part for this complex number. So cos phi is zero. And sin sinus of phi is one. Mm -hmm. I agree. The guys and the girls, I agree. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, I underline, we want to find the argument of our complex number between zero and uh, 2 pi. So, if I have that cosinus phi is 0 and sinus phi is 1, then phi is phi over 2. Clear, I hope. Uh, yes, that's clear. It's clear. clear. Then for the case for the case number number two, we have exactly the same situation except the fact that cosine phi is now minus one and sine phi is zero. Then it is, I hope it is clear that phi is phi because cosinus of phi is minus one and sinus of phi is zero. Mm -hmm. Good. Finally, the third case, maybe here we have a little mistake. So, in this case, the modulus of z 
is square root of two square plus two square. Yes. Yes or not? Yes. So it will the modulus of z will be two multiplied by square root of two. Then in this case we have that cosine is one over square root of two and sinus is minus one over square root of two. In this case, I think that there is a little misprint. So phi is 7 pi over 4. No minus. We can calculate. So you can do this at home. And if it is not right, we can discuss it next time. Okay. 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 Good. Now, now, I don't know for the moment, for the moment, uh, do you have uh, the course of algebra? No. No. So, page number 18, this will be... <clears throat> But this will be something you have to remember. So if you have if you have a polynomial equation of order n, maybe with real, maybe with complex coefficient, then this equation has really n but not necessary distant complex numbers gamma one and so on gamma n such that we can we can represent this polynomial as as the product of a sub n x minus gamma 1, x minus gamma 2, and so on, x minus gamma n. So this means, you see, this means, if I have some equation, polynomial equation of nth order, this equation has n different, different solutions. Maybe for, for some situation, you have that some some roots coincide. This means if you have two roots which have the same the same value, then you say that in fact in fact you have two different roots but with the same value so in some way in some way the number of solutions the number of solutions maybe with some solutions which are not distant is uh, is the same value as the order of your equation. For example, you see, for example, if you have some equation, for example, x minus one to the second power equals zero, you see? So you have in this, for this equation, you can think, that you have only one solution x equals one but in this way for algebra you have 
two solutions x1 equals 1 x2 equals 1 so the the solutions are not distant in some way uh, we can say that there is one only one solution but in algebra we say that for the second order equation for the quadratic equation we have two solutions so two solutions which are not distant is it clear yes that's clear it's clear so you're good it is it is convenient to to say so to say so and uh, i hope in algebra you will see this maybe not now but uh, after okay so it's only for your information and uh, in order to deal with the next with the next exercise so page 90 you see we know exercise 15 page 19 i think i think it will be the last exercise for today because you are tired so <coughs> we will <coughs> we will consider this exercise and it will be enough for today. So, you see, the question is, I want to find the complex numbers that, that satisfy the equation. Z square equals I. So, I know, we know, that if we have, if we have, a quadratic equation then we have to have two two solutions of this equation two roots if you want so how to find these solutions you see i take as usually that that is a plus b i with a and b real numbers being real numbers then you see i write i write the equality i is the right hand side of my equality equals a plus b i square a plus b i is my z then it is easy to see that a plus b i square is a square minus b square plus 2 a b multiplied by i it's the simple formula which make makes use of the fact that i square is minus one only this okay then you see what do we have it it will be necessary in our future work so attention please on the left hand side i have a complex number i okay on the right hand side i have another complex value which is a square minus b square plus 2ab multiplied by i if i compare two complex values and i know how to compare and you know how to compare these complex values so if i have the equality between two complex values i have to have that the real part of these complex complex values complex numbers have to be have to coincide so in uh, the complex value i there is no real part 
this means that a square minus b square has to be zero. Clear? Yes, it's clear. I understand it. Good. So, same thing. You have that your complex value on the left hand side is i. Uh, so, its imaginary part is one. So, on the right hand side, you have 2ab multiplied by i. That is, <clears throat> one is 2ab. Mm -hmm. Clear. Is clear. Yes. Clear. So, so from from this equation, two AD is one. We have that B is one over two A. One over two A. Now we can use the first equation. So A square minus B square zero and from this equation, we have that a to the fourth power is 1 over 4. It's a simple algebra, nothing else. This, this equation gives, you see here we are dealing only with the real numbers. Only with the because A is real. So A can be either plus one over square root of two or minus one square root of two. Then you see, I know that B is one over two A and I have two A to different a plus or minus one over square root of two okay then this equation this equation from this exercise have exactly two different two different roots one plus i over square root of two and minus one minus i over square root of 2. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Really? Mm -hmm. No problem. No problem. Really clear. For all the people. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was understandable. It's clear. Yeah. So it will be enough for today and we will continue next Friday. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you professor. Thank you, Professor. You too. See you, ciao, ciao. See you next Friday. Bye bye. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Mm -hmm.